That's the sawwuf in the 21st century. Or excuse me, ihsan in the 21st century. And I said the word to sawwuf to make some of you edgy to show you how those particulars bother you. Instead of, so what you'll say is, is Suhaib a Sufi? I wonder if he's a Sufi. It's from the people of Bidah. I don't know. So now your mind is busy. I did it on purpose. I did it on purpose. Although you're laughing, I want you to think deeply about what I just did to you, brother and sister. I busied you with a particular, and you forgot the universal, which is, how do you act in front of the computer, man? How do you carry yourself when you're alone with Allah? But we get caught up in names, places, we're not like Dragnet. We don't change the names to protect innocent. No, 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 no. So we get caught up with terms. But a universal axiom that all the scholars agreed upon is al ibratu bil ma'ani la bil asba. All scholars of usul al said that regard is given to the definition, not to the term itself. But how many of us got so caught up in terms that we were never able to engage the definition. And how many of you right now were so confused, I wonder what Tariqa he follows, and he's a people of Bidah, and this and that, that you didn't hear anything I said. I did that on purpose. Yeah, Imam mind trick, not Jedi mind trick. <laughs> to show you a sickness. And I'm sure you've been to places where people are like, are you Salafi, are you Zaytuna, are you Hizb tahrir are you Tabliq? Are you, look man, I'm a Muslim. And all of the other stuff has no ibrah. That's why the scholars of hadith said, لا جرح بالمذهب That there's no criticism of someone according to his methab. If you want to criticize him, criticize his meaning as a person. His scholarly meaning, not his name and his terms. But look at us. So the last problem I would like to emphasize is that in America, in particular, Wallahu alam, I'm, I'm Egyptian now, I'm Ahlawi. But in general, <laughs> although I might change. <laughs> Ahli is a big soccer team in Egypt. They, boy, that's like their Lakers. Don't say you're Zomatic, you get boy, you get beat. It's another team. Really? You're Zomatic? Allah yadi, inshallah. So that. <laughs> Yeah, we had a divorce case actually over this. Yeah, we had, sadly, we had to put this brother in check. He divorced his wife over a soccer team. Over a soccer match. You think that's bad? We got Muslim countries fighting each other over a soccer match. Because we are not able to think about the universals of brotherhood. And that universal of brotherhood, which even goes to the non-Muslims, is replaced by the particular of a stupid ball made in Korea. And when those particulars are put in front of universals, you find a community that's chaotic. And that's why we have this important rule. لا يجوز تقديم الوسائل على المقاصد ولا يجوز تقديم الجزئيات على الكليات. It's not allowed, the scholar said, to put the means in front of the goal. And it's not allowed to put the particulars in front of the universes. Let's take marriage. A lot of us won't marry someone because of their race. Race is a particular. But Islam is our universe. We get mad because certain people from certain countries are on the board of the masjid. Nationality is a particular. But the unity of the Muslims is what? Is a universal. Look how we're illiterate as a people now. That we would allow, or either we're illiterate, we're darling, or we're maqdubi alayhim. We just don't care. But Ahl al-Surat al-Mustaqeem are those who have managed, as Imam Ibn Qayyim al-Allama said, who have sound understanding and sincerity with Allah. And that sound understanding means we find those maqasid, those universals given priority, and those particulars on the back burner. And he said, وَهَاُولَا أَهْلُ الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam. When Imam Ibn Taymiyyah saw the Tartar drinking, and they were Muslims, the famous incident with his companion, and his student said, Shaykh al-Islam, these dudes are drinking, they're Muslims. Ibn Taymiyyah said, if they stop drinking, what are they going to do? 
So if they stop drinking, they're going to rape our women and kill us. So let them drink. Why? Universal, two universals here, but this is a big universal. Look at the faqih, the understanding of a scholar. So as a community in North America, we have to be educated on the universals of Islam again. What are some of the universals? That we do not associate partners with Allah. This doesn't change according to time, according to place, but can it change according to people? Can it? إِلَّا أَن تَتَّقُوا مِنْهُ تُقَابُ What if someone has a gun to you and says, are you Muslim? Does the ruling change then? Does that universal change because of time, place, situation? Ah, wow, I never thought. Start thinking, man. But in general, the default is no shirk. No shirk billah. This is the benchmark of the Muslim ummah. The only ummah in the world that does not have an image for God. A description that can be written on a piece of paper of God. One of our mashaykh said, <coughs> close your eyes and imagine something you've never seen before. I told him, I can't. He said, no, something different. I said, okay, a chocolate dragon. He said, no, that's been seen before. <laughs> I said, I don't know. Sarasir bin Hadid. He said, that's been seen before. He said, Suhaib, and you try this. Ask Richard Dawkins to do this. You cannot think of something that has never been created because you are not the creator. You can't even imagine it because it is beyond your ability. You are not qadir ala kulli shay. You are da'if. I said, la ilaha illallah. He said, exactly. That universal of tawheed, the universal of brotherhood of Muslims, what does it mean, brotherhood? It's not romanticized. We're going to be brothers and sisters when things get bad, not when things get good. It's easy to love each other on E day. Yeah, on that day. Oh, mashallah, brother. <laughs> Rayhan loved that, right? Some flies. <laughs> but our real brotherhood comes when Suhaib makes a mistake, when Sheikh Faqih struggles. When someone in the community struggles, that's when brotherhood kicks in. We don't indict them, we invite them. And we encourage them. How many of these young brothers and sisters here in the masjid, if they had some real, real big issues, yeah, in, not this masjid, in North, this masjid is different, in North America. I asked some of the youngsters, man, one of them said I'm dating a, a, a woman that works at Hooters. I said, oh my gosh, brother. He said, but I'm telling you because I trust you. I don't trust the masjid. I said, you don't trust the masjid? Nah, man. If I go there, all the aunties will talk about my mother. All the sisters will talk about how bad my mother is. And he said to me, they will relish in it. They'll be happy. I said, stuff Allah. That's the quality of who? The munafiqoon. If something asabakum, huh? it makes them happy. If something bad happens to you, it makes them makes if something bad happens to you, they're happy about it. If something good happens to suit them, it makes them sad and angry. One brother came to me and said, the last place I can go is to the masjid. The first place I can go is to the hookah bar. Because there I trust people, even though I don't smoke. Shisha. Says subhanAllah. That brotherhood has to overcome our love for dunya and our competition between each other. What kind of jilbab, TV, and cars, and gold we have, although that's cool, cannot overcome the profound sense of devotion and sacrifice we have to have towards each other as a community. Because until that's there, we will not be like the Salaf. The Salaf had knowledge, the Salaf had bravery, the Salaf had financial support. But one thing that we don't have that the Salaf had is a profound, unique, universal fraternity a love for each other and the prophet said you will not enter paradise until you believe and you will not believe until you love each other and love is from the word in Arabic which means a seed not the loop but a seed and that seed has signs signs of love man look at the Arabs language 
con concern, caring, mercy, guiding each other with wisdom and concern and mercy, not indicting each other, man. There's a time to be tough, but tough is not the default of the Muslim. That's why Allah says, وَلْيَجِدُوا فِيكُمْ غِلْبَةً Ya salam. Allah says, let the enemies of Islam, O, o Sahaba, find in you anger. Fi in Arabic means a dharfiya. al ma'u fi kawz. The word fi in Arabic means you, something that you put inside something. So here Allah says, as I finish, and let them find in you anger as though you're a vessel and anger is not part of your personality. But at that moment in time on a battlefield, anger was put into your hearts for that one moment so they will find it because it's not normal that you're like this. The norm of the prophetic community is ruhama baynahum. And even those verses, shidda ala kuffar, has its place in its moment and its time. Well, yajidu fiqum ghidda means you're not normally angry. Your default is something else. You guys understand? So, building a community, and I'll talk about this as the weekend continues. I'll talk about what is a kulliyat, what is just iyat. What is universal? What is a particular? Which is based first and foremost on universals. The companions did not come into Islam learning about halal and haram from the first moment, man. They came into Islam building a literacy over 20 years. Hijab came how long after? 20 years. Hijab came. And those were the best people. Khamar took time. But they were built on Tawheed, fraternity, Brotherhood, moderation is from those kulliyat. We ask Allah to bless you. We don't have that much time. We can take some Q&A. Fajazakallahu khairan wa sallillahumma ala Sayyidina Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tislima kathira. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuhu.